Well, hello there, YouTube. Welcome back. It is the next day after we started this painting, and we're going to continue working on it. Uh, so it should be somewhat touch dry or in between drying. Not a big deal though, because this is uh, on a oil primed linen that's been toned with oil paint, and we didn't use medium to begin with. So I can actually run the palette knife across it and feel that it is do that you can even hear the sound it's dry enough that we can continue to work on it the magic is this isn't even alkyd oil paint hey stephanie thompson hey tipu so the magic is this is not even alkyd and it is pretty much dry enough see if i dig into it some of it might come out but not a lot so this is perfectly fine to continue to uh, work on it. And that's because the humidity is dropping a little bit in my area. Also, I'm using lead white and I used a pretty hefty amount of umber to start the drawing. So pretty quick drawing and good enough to continue. Hey Janice. Hello, Helen. Thanks for watching from uh, England. Let's go ahead and mix some colors and get into some trouble. I'm not going to add any medium just yet unless I feel like I have to. And if I do, I have a little bit of Neo McGilp down there. I changed the setting on my camera. Um, I don't know if it'll affect the streaming at all. Just a heads up, it might, but it should be a little more clear uh, the resolution than than last time. We shall see. So I'm using lead white and burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, and I'm going to just recharge the palette and just see if I can match some color over there. Rublev's burnt sienna dries pretty quickly. This is Rublev burnt sienna combined with the, uh, the lead white, the Michael Harding lead white. It does dry at a pretty decent speed. Go ahead and double check a few things on my computer. One of them is the photo reference. Alright, I've got a photo reference now. Totally forgot to do that. So in the beginning, I'm basically just trying to uh, match a color just to get warmed up. That's all right. That's pretty good. Now looking at the reference, I want to push the eyes and the nose as far as I can, and I'm going to be developing it kind of like piece by piece. So I'm going to zoom into my reference a little bit. And we're going to return to the dark colors for this eye. I'm going to switch brushes. Burnt Sienna. Ultramarine Blue. The A little bit of cadmium red, which my cadmium red dries super fast. It's what I have left of my uh, old Holland cadmium red. The thing dries so fast. Put a mark down here. This is such a amazing portrait painting. The original. There's just so much life in this that it's going to be so much fun to capture but to start off with I need some basics down using a little bit of green now we're getting into structure and color and um, the most important structural things to mention 
beginning is the basics. Having a strong foundation in things like cast drawing, uh, self-portraits, still lives from life, uh, things like that are very useful for this kind of work. Here, I uh, join Captain Matthew. Oh, of course. Oh, thank you for that wonderful comment. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm worthy of such high, uh, such high recognition, but thank you so much for that comment. All right, so that's a tad bit red. And uh, one thing about Rembrandt I've noticed in particular is he puts a lot of warmth. Uh, if you look at the image close up in Google Arts and Culture, if you look really closely, there's a lot more orange and red around the eyelids, which gives it more of like a tired look. But I think I overdid it, so I'm coiling it off a little bit. I'm adding this dark so that I have something to work with. Now I'm going to switch brushes and we're going to get really subtle. So this is a size 4 cat's tongue shaped, not made out of cat's tongues. Uh, cat's tongue shaped pure red sable. Sables allow you to have a lot of control. Okay. As we're slowing down, I'm not going to finish the eye before I move to the nose but I will do my best to get as much down for the eye So the eye has a top plane, and the lower eyelid has a top plane, a middle plane, the under plane is a little overdone. So I'm going to switch now to a dark brush, same type of brush. If you have never used this type of brush, I'm not sponsored by this company, um, but I will tell you that from all the years of experience that I have, these sables give me the most control uh, in these very delicate areas, especially for portraiture. The cat's tongue shape, uh, I got that from uh, researching and asking around uh, what Nelson Shanks used. And uh, I always talk about Nelson Shanks. If you haven't heard of Nelson Shanks, he is uh, my superhero. incredible painter uh, from 20th century and he would use these cat's tongue shaped pure red sables there we go now, now they're starting to be a little more of that tired look that tired very human element to it like I've been I've been working in the dungeon for so long for so many years and it's the 17th century and now I've got to sit for hours for this guy named Rembrandt. I'm wondering when the next model break is. I got to go feed my cow. 
or whatever he was thinking. But there's just so much life. So much life in this. This is a live painting video. But I do have live chat replay enabled. So you will be able to watch this, uh, watch the live chat basically like unfold if you're watching this as a pre recorded video in the future. So that would be kind of fun. But if you're watching this live, please feel free to ask, ask any art related questions. Right now it's kind of like smooth cruising, um, looking for shapes around the eyes. I'll move you to a close up for a little bit. You've seen a, a little bit of color mixing now at this point, but I know that uh, I've got allergies, allergies, allergies. I know that you want to see some close up footage. So there you go. What's so nice about the cat's tongue, your red sables is that when you press down, it has a filbert's touch because the base of it, it it's it's like a filbert you see it there it's like a filbert but then at the top it's it's pointy like a round so when you add a really delicate touch you can get a nice pointy mark like a round but if you want something more plainy um something more planar, you can, um, you can press down a little bit harder. Now I'm realizing that this camera is not in a good place because I'm trying to talk to you while I'm painting, so I have a plan B for where to put the camera. And Crimson is excellent, and let me show you the palette. It's easier if you just see it. So that little red mixture there, right here, it's easier to sneak in red in the warm tones with alizarin crimson. But if it gets too dark, which it's not too dark at this point, if it ever gets too dark, use cadmium red. It doesn't get quite as um, dark. For the ideal green to use for basically anything, Viridian is my favorite, but I'm using uh, something called Verona Green Earth. It's a Rublev color. All right, so now there's some very sharp planes over here. So the chat is pretty quiet at the moment. I mean, I did just start the stream like 10 or 15 minutes ago. Uh, so definitely feel free to answer this question I'm gonna ask everyone. I already told you my favorite brush and the shape of it and why I like to use it. So in the most detailed short sentence that you can possibly write, let me know let us all know in the chat what your favorite brushes are to use so just name the brushes that you like to use and then why so what's your favorite brushes to use what are your favorite brushes to use and why it could be any reason you could like the color of the brush it could just be the cheapest brush that you can find and it works and that's cool but what are your favorite brushes to use? Oops. Almost got dark and light mixed up.
Maybe in pot. Cool name. You like filberts and flats because I have. I find I have the most control with them. Never really did give flats a try. But I do hear that often. Hey Brian Wong. So remember, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. It actually helps me out. Even if you just want to say hi. That's okay. Hello. <laughs> uh, it helps out with the YouTube algorithm. Helps YouTube know that I'm still here. Now something about um, lead white and the way that it dries. I did use some titanium white up here, and I can I can by looking at it I can tell that I used titanium white there. When it dries, it dries kind of like a stone. It looks like a stone. Whereas when titanium white starts to dry, it looks more like reflective, like plastic lead white when it dries it looks more matte and it could depend on what lead white you use too but most of them I found dry kind of like a stone what did I just do I added light to my Dark brush, oh well. And lead white has this kind of a uh, transparency, <clears throat> transparency to it, where you can see the layers underneath. You can feel the validity to it. Pretty nice. I'll move you to a close up again. That's not the right one. There you go. Whoops. Hey Janice. Delta Van Gogh flats and rounds. They're old and all I've ever used. Cool. Well, if it's what you're comfortable with, that's the best thing for you to use. So in terms of structure and color, I'm using some cooler notes uh, with this uh, Verona Green Earth color mixed in with my Burnt Sienna. I'm actually moving the tear bag, the lower tear bag up and sculpting it a little better. Hey Brian Wong, you like filberts and flats also. Hmm. I'm actually starting to like this Verona Green Earth. I didn't like it at first because it wasn't Viridian. <laughs> Stupid reason not to like it, but um, it is. It's right over here. It's it's kind of grainy. It's grainy like a hand grinded up um, color. You see how transparent that is? The Verona Green Earth. And um, honestly, I think I've only ever used it for like painting flowers or something in the past. But the grainy particle size to it adds a nice... Let's add some titanium white to it. It adds a nice, uh, uh, I guess, similar to the lead white, like a matte look to it. 
And uh, if we look at it on the pallet knife, it's not a very strong green. It's not a brilliant bright green. So it, I could even do stuff like this. Like it adds a nice touch, a cool touch uh, to things like that. And you wouldn't even notice it because it's not that saturated. Green colors are typically difficult to work with with skin colors because sometimes they just get too too blue or too yellow and too saturated. But the Verona Green Earth, I think it's an earth color. I mean, it says earth in it, so earth color. But it works pretty nice. And if you look at the Rembrandt in here, there's some cooler greens and blues as we get closer to the skeleton, to the bone. Now notice as I, as I start to get more refined with that shape, I'm second guessing myself a lot more. So I'm standing back and forth, back and forth a lot more than I do when I'm working um, just more holistically, just mapping out the shapes and stuff like we did last time. But now that I'm putting a lot more emphasis on the structure, I'm moving back much more frequently. Especially when I'm uh, getting close to finishing a painting I stand back a lot that's when I start to bump into things hey Yuri, oh thank you So now I'm making this a little more plainy, and I'm not even putting the eyebrows yet. More plainy, meaning that plane change was already there, but it wasn't articulate enough. So I want it to be more articulate. Painting is like a language. It is a language. There's a grammar to it, the structure to it, uh, the Light and shadow, the, the fundamentals is the grammar to it. But then there's more refinement to that grammar uh, where you can become more and more clear and concise with your message. And in, in here it needs a little more clarity. I'll zoom you in again. Not to that. Keep pressing the wrong button. I gotta be careful because I touched the titanium white. Easy to overdo it. See that? Too big of a jump. That's why it's easier to work with lead white because you won't overdo it that quickly. But like I said, you can use titanium white, it's fine. Once you develop a touch for it, it's no problem. But there's other advantages that um, lead white has, such as the texture that I was talking about. Okay, I've done a lot to that eye. It's starting to look like an eye. I still haven't put the uh, sclera in it or any of those refinements. 
It's okay. Um, It'll work as an eye. I've got lots of allergy problems in this room. Um, anyway, so now let's move on to the nose. And remember last time, yesterday, I said that the nose was a little bit long, so we're probably gonna have to move it up to like, yeah, like up to there. We were way off with the nose. But it's okay, now that we've got some stuff here that we can refer to, should be no problem. Mistakes are only stepping stones to success. And yes, we do make mistakes in portrait painting. Not like the beloved Bob Ross would say. He was an amazing person, a great character. I really, really enjoy that he brought so many people into into painting. Uh, but there, there are mistakes in uh, in painting. Especially in portraiture. Which leads me to the next. And it's a tendency I've had since I was like 20 something. Since I was like 22. I feel like. Almost 10 years ago. Let's be honest, we're not perfect. Oops, switch to light brush and the dark brush. And that's one of the nice things about the live stream, the unedited videos. I can actually get to show you mistakes and how I deal with them and let you know it's okay to make mistakes. So I'm starting the nose off with the bulb and to be honest, I think it's still, speaking of mistakes, I think it's still a little bit long. So I'm going to go back to this dark, move it up again. I could measure it if I want to, I don't feel like it. Because whatever paint I put down, I will create a form for the nostril, uh, for the wing, for the bulb. And the way that I'm painting, it's, it's pretty easy to move it up and down. And I'm in no hurry. I'm not going to fly through it and try to get the most impressive thing down possible. Oh, thanks, Yuri. Everyone's being kind of shy. 
What's your most common mistake? Surrounding color? Yeah, kind of, um, but in... Okay, so when I'm painting someone from real life, I'm relating one shape of color to another shape of color. You're right, in this one in particular, there's not a lot of color variation to it. So, yeah, I am making it kind of like a darker shade. However, in theory, so the answer... Your question is yes, it's, it's kind of like a darker version of the same color, but in, in theory, um, in, to me, for better or for worse, I can at least get hints. So when I'm painting a new structure in, since we are talking about structure and color, I will put down a darker color, like I am with the wing of the nose, with the intention of adding light to it later. And I'll shape it through the dark color, and pretty much in like an ala prima sense. I will shape it. Like I said, the intent is not to finish any one section, like the nose, but I'm doing the most that I can with it. And then once I basically tire of it, I move to another section. And then I will return like I did with the eye. And usually I'll see more stuff after returning to it. So the old masters didn't just eyeball it, they didn't just look and guess and get lucky with how they painted. They had extensive training in anatomy. Obviously, they don't have to have, painters don't have to have a knowledge of anatomy like a doctor. Um, but just enough surface anatomy. The anatomy needed to paint, you can basically learn it in probably two to three semesters worth of classes, atelier type classes. Um, you can also just learn it through people like me explaining it to you and then you finding it for yourself. In, um, and paintings that you do from life. But you're not going to uh, excel with it if you're trying to paint from family photographs all the time. I know I mentioned this yesterday. But if you're going to paint from a reference and you want to learn, best thing to do 
is to work from Google Arts and Culture or I think the National Gallery of Art now in DC and in London has uh, these really nice high quality reproductions. Don't print it out if you can avoid it, unless you have access to a really nice printer. Uh, but just work from some kind of LED screen or a computer screen, a TV, or a iPad. Don't get it too close to you so you don't hurt your eyes. Hey, Shavo. Oh, thank you. Thanks for watching from India. If you want a basic idea of how I achieve colors like this for the skin, uh, burnt sienna, white, ultramarine blue will get you there. I'm using a lot of burnt sienna, white, um, and this color, this Verona green earth. So burnt sienna is going to be one of the most useful colors for you. Or um, simplistic make sure not to make your darks straight black I don't even have straight black on the palette I have to mix every single dark why don't you want to have straight black because just like when you're um, when you're looking at something from life anything that's like straight white is like a deer uh, like a deer in headlights, like those bright headlights. Like, if you make the sclera white, you heard me say this probably a thousand times if you've been watching the videos, like shooting laser beams out of your lights, out of your, out of your eyes. You've got headlights basically for eyes if you add titanium white to the eyes. And now reverse that logic and it's the same uh, for the darks. You want to have a subtlety in your darks. Now for the nasal bone, it's going to be a little tricky. I'm going to have to work the eye next to it uh work on it a little bit this section and then walk my way over there to the nasal bone and then start to um refine that a little better I'm using Verona Green Earth, Alizarin, Ultramarine Blue. Hey Tupu. So there's interruptions in the live stream, sometimes a minute or more. Alright, let me see what I can do here. I would explain some things here. Uh, uh could be my camera because I tried to put a higher quality setting on my camera. I'm going to go to my web browser and shut off some uh, tabs. Shut off my email. Hopefully, not shut off the live stream. 
Well, thanks for letting me know. I shut some things off on my computer. Well, thanks for letting me know. That, unfortunately, is out of my control for the most part. I'm not going to hate on my uh, internet company. Not very good. But thanks for letting me know. Now in theory, what I adjusted on my camera shouldn't it, it shouldn't affect the live stream um, because it's not part of the computer settings, so I don't know. It's still buffering. Let me check. Yeah, I guess that would explain. Wow, this video is doing terribly, too. Well, I'll do what I can. I'll just keep painting and hope for the best. Um, yeah, that's the problem with live streaming, unfortunately. Let me try something. Alright, so I may lose the stream altogether. So if this shuts off by accident, I'm sorry. I'm unplugging, replugging my uh, Ethernet cable, and I'm refreshing my internet connection. So it should lose about a second. Of connection or it'll lose the whole thing uh, if it loses the whole thing you still at least have some painting footage but anyway uh, just letting you know I'm gonna try I'm gonna try All right, so you should have lost a second or two of connection. Uh, but I'm hoping that corrected the internet problem. Sometimes it's a case of unplug and plug. I don't know. I don't know. Hey, Janice, it seems okay now. I hope so. I'm not sure myself. I can't wait for the days when internet is like really good. It's still not really good. Better than it was like 2009, but still not as good as I wish it would be. It worked great when the internet cable was unplugged. That's pretty funny. Uh, hey, hippie artist. I don't think I got your email. Unless you're the Amazon guy that was trying to email me the other day uh, with that story about 
I don't think that was you, but some some Amazon person was trying to contact me. But no, I, I didn't get an email. I mean, I can check. Actually, I probably shouldn't. Um, I can check after the stream. So I don't lose any more connections. Thanks for the heads up about the internet. A hippie artist to get a reference photo to download. Uh, you mean for this painting, or you mean for another one? Because th this one is uh, the link to this one is in the description box of the video. If you want to paint along with this one, which I I do suggest. So are we good now? Can everyone see me? Let me know if uh, the connection is working. I, I don't know. I unplugged and plugged my internet cable and it seems to have done something. I should have lived through dial-up. I did, Nick Floyd. I did. I remember that uh, sound, that the dial-up sound. You remember that? I remember. It froze again. Now it's back. Oh dear. Don't hate me for this, or right, you can hate me if you want to. Oh, we spoke too soon. Oh, man. Internet, internet. Question. What internet does everyone use? I'm done with Verizon. Um, and I'm not trying to hate on them. I'm sure it's not their fault, but... What internet does everyone use? Tipu Rogers in Canada. Rogers Internet. Never heard of it. Then check it out. Yeah, this internet has just been awful. Ever since I started YouTube, I've never had a good time with this internet. When I had to upload videos, it would take hours. There was one time where it took like I think almost an entire day to upload one video. This is just awful. Let's see. Nick Floyd, yeah, you remember that noise. They put it in music now, of all things. I heard uh, some remix of a song they put in the dial-up sound. I was like, oh no. No thank you. I do have faith in technology. I do feel like the internet will be better a decade from now. I hope I'll still be making live streams a decade from now. I know, right? That isn't music, it's torture. But, I mean, some music is torture nowadays, isn't it? <laughs> As he nervously laughs. 
knowing he's in trouble. Anyway, uh, this is how I I cruise around in a painting, to be honest. I like having something in the back of my mind when I'm painting. I can't just work in like total silence, uh, like full academic mode, like a physicist sitting there writing down equations, trying to figure out why string theory isn't working, uh, things like that. I, I can't do that. I have to have some kind of distraction. Now that the internet is working, uh, can everyone send me at least one comment? Even if all you want to say is hi. That's all good. I just would like to know that I'm somewhat relevant, that, <laughs> that you didn't leave. Let me know that you're here. Hey Tipu, can't wait to see how I make the subject look down. Is he looking down? Oh, well you kind of. Good, good point. Um, I'll figure that out in a second. Alright, let's do that. Let's do that. Um, yeah, his eyelash, his eyelid, upper eyelid. Yeah, you're right. He's looking up a little bit. Just a little bit, we're gonna, we're gonna work on that. It's now 3.30, but my phone hasn't rang, and that's because my phone isn't here. Um, but usually I will paint till 3.30 when my wife gets off of work. Um, I'll just pretend I forgot it was 3.30. I would like to keep painting a little bit longer. Hey, Diogo, uh, Rodriguez, uh, thank you, thank you. Thanks, Janice. Beanpot's still here, awesome. Awesome. Oh, thanks, hip, uh, Hippie Artist, thank you, thank you. Yep, yeah, keep the comments going, everyone, even if all you want to say is hi. If you were nervous to write in the live stream, I know I get nervous if I'm watching something live. Uh, just take this as an open opportunity to just say hi. Just say hello, write something interesting about your cat, or your dog, or something. Anything non-offensive is totally fine. Yeah, definitely. I'd recommend trying this one, um, Hippie Artist. This is one of Rembrandt's best, I think, in his... Rembrandt in his best, I think. Relative to what I think. Other people can think other things. I think this is Rembrandt at his best. Like Renoir. I think Renoir's best when, was when he was younger. Hey Angela, I'm glad you're here. It's always good to hear from you. If you artist, you're still working on the mod mod job painting. I don't know which one that is, but that's all good. Keep the comments going, keep the comments going, please. Why did I move back to this eye? See, I wasn't even consciously thinking that. I was, oh right, because I gotta make him look down. Is he looking down? He's not looking down that much. 
but I had him looking up a little bit. He's actually looking that way, so let's work on that real quick. So that needs to get a little darker. Hey hippie artist, a lesson from Patreon. Alright, you're gonna have to let me know. If it's something specific from Patreon, just let me know on Patreon. I'm usually pretty good at responding to those messages. And I'm always checking it between Tuesday and Saturday. Those are my internet days. Also, by the way, if anyone um, decides to join my online classes, say on a Sunday or a Monday, and you don't get a response from me, that's usually because I'm away from the computer. Sundays and Mondays. But I'm actually doing my best to check it, you know, even if I'm like in a family event or something like uh, like I usually am Sundays and Mondays I'm, I'm doing hopefully better with checking it and whenever anyone joins the online classes uh, I when I can get to the computer I send you the playlists for all the projects so I've noticed some people join and then leave after like an hour or so I think they might get frustrated that I don't respond to them quickly I don't always get an update from my phone when someone joins but as soon as I see that there's someone new and I'm near my computer I usually am very diligent about sending the playlist He's looking down now a little bit. Yeah, I think so, yeah. A little bit. Hey, Shuvo, you want to study classical art on your own rather than for college. What should you do for this? I got you. All right, so what should you do? Number one, one of the best things you can do right now to improve on your classical art one of the best things you can do is to invest in an easel uh, that's one of the best things I think you can do invest in an easel don't draw just like sitting like this um, get yourself the proper stance when you're working what's the proper stance the proper stance is Whatever your subject is, and this is something that everyone can improve like right now if you're not already doing this. The proper stance is keep yourself an arm's length away. If you can stand, stand and draw. If you cannot stand, just sit, it's fine. Keep yourself an arm's length away with your pencil, just like a brush. Don't hold it like this. Hold it further back. This is what you want to do. And when you draw, Keep yourself as close as an arm's length away as possible. Even now, when I'm working on these little like fine touches, notice I'm still pretty far back. So you, you never see me like right here, which is what some people will do. Um, work on your stance. That's even before you draw anything, your stance is the most important thing. Next, when you actually want to draw and paint something, uh, work on a drawing of either an old master or uh, a plaster cast so you can work from this this reference that you see here draw it with just light and shadow just focus on light and shadow drawings for as long as you can 
light and shadow drawings will be the best uh, thing for you to begin with after you get the proper stance. Um, and that will be uh, pretty much the best uh, starting point for you. And then there's more beyond that, but feel free to ask as I'll be here. All right, so I'm checking my uh, internet, I mean my inbox right now, uh, hippie artist. I haven't gotten any updates since 2.32, so that's just my internet for you. But I'll make sure to double check that. You're asking a painting question because you don't have a cat or a dog. That's okay, don't worry about it. Uh, let's see. Rodriguez, what, what keeps you motivated all these years doing videos? That's a very good question. Um, I don't honestly know if it's the output of the painting, uh, if it's the creating of the videos. Actually, that would be a lie. I hate editing videos. I don't like editing videos, which is why I'm here doing a live stream. Um, what motivates me the most with video is the act of painting and talking and knowing that I'm passing this on to others. Knowing that hopefully in the future, uh, future generations from now will probably categorize their favorite YouTube videos, um, even though they'll be like fossils and things like that. Um, knowing that this will have some kind of impact in the art world, in the back of my mind, motivates me to continue making videos. Uh, it's something that I truly enjoy. Um, Nelson Shanks, The Portrait of, as Fine Art, is the first painting video that I've ever seen. And uh, it really motivated me to paint, and I want to pass that on to, uh, to, to everyone. I want everyone to have that same kind of inspiration and, and motivation that I had. Believe me, I'm not making these videos to try to be a millionaire or something like that. Uh, I'm making these videos because I enjoy doing it, and... I like the impact that I, f I feel like I could potentially have on the art world. A positive impact, I hope. But very good question, very good question. I like it. Uh, so from Tipu, uh, let's see. So we should paint from far back if our hand is shaking because of the distance. My hand does that too. Uh, so sometimes like, I hold my hand straight. You probably can't notice it, but sometimes I'll hold my hand out and it does shake. Um, and I did have a student in person uh, when I was teaching a portrait class. He was uh, 90. He is 90. Well, I guess now he's like 93. Um, his hand would shake like this when he would draw. And he, he would keep himself arm's length away and it would his lines would have a nice squiggle to it, kind of like a Rembrandt landscape drawing, if you've ever seen that, which is pretty cool. I mean, I think it adds a nice uh, dimension and depth to the drawing. But one thing you could do is rest your pinky. So see how I'm arm's length away? Um, I can still rest my pinky on here, and that's, that's fine. Even though I'm holding it from here, that's fine. I'm still an arm's length away. So good question, good question. And if you changed your your stance because of watching the Patreon series, awesome. Um, let's see, Tipu, how can we make precise strokes? There is no such thing as a precise stroke. Uh, so one thing to watch out for is perfection uh, when you're painting, and everything is a series of corrections. My one of my um, I have many favorite teachers, but one of my favorite teachers. John DeMartin uh, would would say that a drawing is nothing more than a series of corrections. So the first thing I can tell you if you're trying to have more precise brush strokes is don't think about a precise brush stroke. Don't even think about a brush stroke. Think about a structure. Think about a shape. And that's it. Think about just shapes. I share too much? Uh -huh. Uh, thanks, uh, Diogo. A hippie artist. Uh, no worries about the the age. 
I've got um I've gotten beaten so 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 much by uh, uh in, in uh pocket billiards. I play pool as my hobby. Uh my only hobby right now is other than caring for my reptiles is um playing pool, pocket billiards. Man, I'm telling you, there's guys there in their like seventies and they can shoot so well um their aim is just amazing um so don't let the the aim i mean don't let the age deter you uh pool requires a much more precise eye uh in a shorter amount of time than painting painting requires a much more precise eye in a longer amount of time i think Angela, oh good, I'm glad I positively impacted you. You learned and relaxed, that's good. Angela is one of the online students with us. So she's been with us for I think two two or three years now, I'm not sure. Uh, her paintings are amazing. I, I gotta put one of them in the, in the um, slideshow for the promotions of the classes. I think I might even have one, I'm not sure. But if I don't have one now, I will soon. Now the nose is definitely closer to the edge. So the side of his head is thinner. And his nose, this needs to come out maybe like a Half of a millimeter. And it gives that kind of like nice bony structure to the side of his head. See that that's what I'm saying. This this Rembrandt is I think from his uh, best the best of the best. Rembrandt's greatest hits, I think this is one of them. So I'm taking out a piece of paper towel. Pushing that line back, fading it a little bit. Now we'll do some more stuff here. I really should check my phone. I'm gonna get in trouble, but oh well. It's all for the sake of art, isn't it? I realize you haven't seen the color mixtures in a minute, so I'm gonna switch you back. So you can see some of the colors. Thanks for all the comments, everyone. Hey hippie artist, it would be awesome to be an online person. Online, I think that was a typo. Gotta love Rembrandt. Verona, Green Earth, and Burnt Sienna. They pretty much perfectly make this color. At least relative to my computer screen. Good question uh, from Jesse Van Blomstein. Blomstein. 
I can, let's just get this out of the way. I cannot pronounce names to save my life, so I apologize everyone for my pronunciation. And yes, English is my first language. Um, okay, so let's see. What do I prefer, water mixable oil paints or traditional oil paints and why? I prefer uh, traditional oil paints over water mixable oil paints. Why it is for the drying time of uh, traditional oil paints dry on average in my experience a lot faster than water mixable oil paints um that's the main reason i mean there's other reasons like there's no lead white in most or i guess all water mixable oil paints that i know of um it only makes sense because they're supposed to be they're marketed to be safer um, in terms of health hazards and stuff, but it doesn't mean I don't like water mixable oil paints. I'll still use them if I'm gonna do like an Ella Prima or something. Uh, I'll still use them. A hippie artist in the class, as you mean? Oh, okay. Um, yeah, definitely. Are you on the Facebook beyond the the Facebook group for? Um, viewers of these live streams because i can uh talk to you there it might be easier than uh email because as of right now i don't have an artist website so if you look me up i don't have a website running at the moment um i just have the instagram hey Eunice. oh thank you thank you What was I doing? I was supposed to work my way towards the nasal bone. And I'm going to explain the nasal bone to you because this is an amazing nasal bone. First thing I'm going to do is cut into the side of the nasal bone. And I did all this so that I could work my way here. And now I'm going to ask you to forgive me, but I'm going to go to close up because the structure is more important than the color right now it looks like my internet is getting a little attitude with me so i hope i don't lose the internet all right so first thing to notice is the where does the like imagine the skeleton where does the nasal bone begin and end so uh you can definitely tell on the Rembrandt that it begins up here with the root of the nose and you can actually see the volume of it out here I'm outlining it for you and then right there is a boundary change right there is a boundary change this curve coincides with this one and that boundary change right there is indicated yes i need to clip my nails that boundary change right there is indicated by the outline so don't just blindly copy the outline for the edge of the nose that is a critical uh contour change because it describes the outer curve of the nose because you can picture the skeleton now that goes up flat down and then here is underneath here is the hole and that gives us now the bulb of the nose the fleshy part of the nose thanks angela So that's why that structure is so important. And in fact, every form should coincide with its interior shapes and out, uh, exterior shapes. They should communicate to one another. Um, right here, there's a very 
subtle but present a very subtle pink warm pink here it's darker right there and i'm exaggerating it but you'll see it if you go to google arts and culture if you zoom in to the reference you'll see this because it coincides with the form boundary of the outside of the nasal bone there and even the highlight starts here and then it turns because it's coinciding with the um, structure of the nasal bone and i know that i'm saying a lot of stuff right um but one thing that you'll notice about me is i, I repeat myself a lot so if you didn't quite catch what i said here you'll have an, another opportunity So that's the difference between a well-informed nose and uh, a nose that was just kind of like second thought. Now, uh, for example, a doctor, some of you are doctors, a doctor will know a lot more anatomy uh, than your average person, right? Um, I hope so. And even though a doctor knows this stuff, the doctor doesn't necessarily have the training in the arts to be able to control their structure and color to do that. A hippie artist that says you're following me on Facebook. Oh, good, good. I mean, as long as you're in that group, um, I should be able to contact you there. So a doctor will have the knowledge, but not uh, the anatomical knowledge, but not necessarily uh, the knowledge of how to speak the language of painting. What's my favorite Rembrandt painting or etching? Right now, this is my favorite Rembrandt painting, next to his um, brilliant self-portraits. But this one is my favorite. And it's because I didn't really know about it. I didn't see it until, like, yesterday. It's funny because I was going to paint another Rembrandt. And then I couldn't find the reference anymore. And then I saw this one and I was like, oh, I guess I'll paint this one. And then I really started to look at it and I was like, oh, wow. There's so much life in this painting. See, this, uh, the point of the sable gives me so much control. But then when I press down, I can have a really fine mark. And I don't need the highlight right now. The highlight's more like the icing on the cake marker. And uh, I'll put them in like, like here. I put that in and there just for place markers for the form. Looks like I got another zero on my internet connection. That's just great. Apologize for that. Okay, so the internet is back. Looks like it was gone for a little bit. What I was saying when the internet cut out was I'm not going to put the highlight on the nose quite yet because highlights. Uh, as nice as they are, as fun as they are to put in, they're just like the icing on the cake. You've got to actually bake the cake first. What's more important is the structure that the highlights are sitting on. I'm not using any extra medium, though I think I did use a little bit of Neo McGilp in the dark for the eyes. Hey, Chris. Well, thanks for watching. I do hope to be able to make more of these. This is the style of 
uh, live streams that I do for the online classes. The difference with my online classes, difference between this and that, uh, the online classes is my um, something I call the virtual classroom, which is a uh, pre-recorded video I make to give students feedback. Um, not that anyone was asking, but it's just uh, I just want to make it known that it's, I'm not keeping anything from you. My online students that are here will, um, you know, they will tell you if I'm lying or not, but this is, what you see here is basically what I do for the online students as well, except they get, they have the ability to get feedback from me. So I'm not keeping anything from you. Just because these are free videos, I don't want to make the content any less um, less in depth. Let's see, hey uh, Diego, let's see, you're just thinking in stroke economy. I'm so bad at painting that the head is 10 strokes and done. What? Um, I, like I was saying before, I wouldn't think too much about the brush strokes. Um, think about what the brush stroke says. It's like um, Nelson Shanks said this once. It's the brush stroke is like the it's like the font in a typewriter, which now I can say it's like the font in your smartphone or whatever. It's not you don't care so much about the font. Uh, you you care about the message. So. Um, Think about the message conveyed through the brush stroke, but not the brush stroke itself. For example, you might be thinking a lot about John Singer Sargent, um, like a lot of us are. In term, like, when you think of brush stroke, like the the most synonymous name with brush stroke is John Singer Sargent. But John Singer Sargent is not a great painter because of his brush strokes. John Singer Sargent is great because he knows his his knowledge of structure and color and planes. That's what makes John Singer Sargent great, not his brush stroke. The brush stroke, uh, once again, remember this, everyone. The brush stroke is like the type. It's like the type on a typewriter. And I was, I was never. I never use the typewriter, but I can, you know, tell you it's like the type, it's like the font on your uh, on your smartphone messenger. You don't care about the font that much as long as you can read it. And notice, like, I'm doing little dabs at a time. I'm not doing a big... Big flowing brush strokes. Now, if I want to make this look like big flowing brush strokes, I can do that later. I can return to this and actually make it look like there's brush strokes all over the place and make it look effortless. Like a Robert Liberace, uh, although he does it effortlessly because he's Robert Liberace, but for all of us humans, um, it is something you can always add on later. Uh, what's the name of this uh, Rembrandt's original? I think it's I don't think he titled it um, on Google Arts and Culture. It's titled Portrait of an Old Man But once again, the link is uh, in the description box it's, it's actually hard to find it if you're trying to scroll through Google Arts and Culture So I would just use the, the link in the description box Now it's pushing on four, well, it's actually four o'clock. Where is my phone? I don't know. All right, so if I have time, 
if I have time tomorrow, I'll, I'll give it about a 50% chance. Um, if I have time in between my Zoom sessions with students, I will continue this tomorrow at the same time. Because there's still a lot to do. If not, we'll get back to it maybe like on Tuesday. Like I said, I'm more comfortable with these live streams. I've been doing them for a long time now for the online students. I've got the experience. Frankly, it's more fun for me to do a live stream and talk than it is to do a pre-recorded video and then edit it. Hey, hippie artist, problems getting proper references pictures for the tutorials okay so some of them uh are like from so long ago that i probably don't even have the references anymore but for the most part the uh like the bugaro one you were looking for that one was on uh, google arts and culture uh the uh uh, yeah, most of them I think are Google Arts and Culture, but I'll I'll see what I can do. Just write a comment or a post on um, the Facebook group, the uh, Facebook group that I made for the viewers of these live painting sessions, connecting the bridge of the nose now. See there? That's the connection between the maxilla and the side plane of the nose. There's always this little, I don't know, like a, it's a bridge sometimes. I'll call it a bridge. So much fun. from Diego Rodriguez let's see you mean for a head study you don't do more than 10 strokes because you can't see all the variations of the planes well yes I mean if I get what you're saying I mean if you're trying to do or if you are doing paintings in a certain number of brush strokes yeah i can see how that could be a, a useful exercise but in real life like when you're painting someone from real life i always emphasize it because if i'm painting someone in real life i wouldn't use a different method than this um, i'll use the same method it's it's going to be harder for you to paint them in a certain number of brush strokes But I get what you're saying, and honestly, I can I cannot paint a portrait in ten brushstrokes. No matter how much uh, time I take per brushstroke, it's just not possible for me. But it's a it's a pretty cool challenge. I've never really thought of that before. Let's see, the bridge is only on the side profile, or is it straight on the nose in the same manner? It, it's straight on the nose. Um, if his head turned, that little bridge, that right there, would still be noticeable. I mean, it depends on, like, their nose, too. Like, if their nose is more flat, like some people, it's more flat, um, then it's almost non-existent, but... But yeah, usually, like, it's on the wing of the nose, like, right on top of the wing of the nose. You will see that on, on most noses, but, I mean, there's always exceptions. I 
it's like earlobes like uh, most people have a earlobe like that's connected to the fleshy part of the side of their face but some people their earlobe is just straight um, so it's, it's different for some people The Verona green earth looks like sap green. Let's see. Uh, Cheryl M. Uh, oh, don't worry about being behind on the stream. Uh, it is different in how it handles. The Verona green earth is more grainy. Um, but it is transparent. Like sap green. But it's not quite as waxy. Um, so when you mix it, it holds its own a little bit better than uh, sap green. But uh, yeah, uh, the hue looks a little similar, but it's more blue. Uh, I don't even know if I have my sap green around here. I don't know where it is, but the sap green is a little more yellow than the Verona green. I know it should be around here somewhere, but anyway, um, if I had a choice between the two, the Sap and the Verona, I'd probably use the Verona. If I had a choice between any green and Viridian, I would use Viridian. I just have so little of it left in the tube that I'm using any other green that I can find. A nice green that you can just mix with a palette knife is cadmium yellow. Ultramarine blue and then kill it off with a little burnt sienna That will have the opaqueness from the cadmium yellow uh, But it will be a little dull with the burnt sienna, which is what you want A little more of the characteristic of his nose and that should be good uh, like I said there's a, a small chance a small chance greater than zero I will return tomorrow around the same time if I can in between the zoom sessions on Fridays I have zoom one-on-one -on -one sessions and then I have group zoom uh, a group zoom painting session with the online students. Um, so it's a little bit of a busy day for me. But if not, we should return maybe like Tuesday or so. But I definitely want to return soon um, and, and continue working on, on this Rembrandt because I, I really do like this Rembrandt. So this is the point in the stream where I will ask if there are any last minute questions. You see, I'm taking my time with it. I didn't move too too fast. While you're asking your questions, I'm moving the camera so you can see it with less distortion. To be honest, I probably should just move it like this. There we go. Hey, Karen. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Pretty fine Rembrandt. Well, thank you, Stephanie. Hey, hippie artist. 
Uh, yeah, I would suggest make the greens as I just suggest. I mean, Zorn green is also a good one. Uh, Zorn green is just yellow ochre and ivory black. So if you have yellow ochre, ivory black, just mix those two. And that will create the green from the Zorn palette. And that's, that's still a pretty good green to use. Hey Jesse, yeah, his drawings are pretty incredible. Uh, Rembrandt. Well, thank you. Hope you have a nice weekend too. I actually will just take this and put it right in the freezer. Sometimes I'll put it in the box. Um, so sometimes I'll put it in this. It's a stay wet palette, uh, 12 by 16. Um, and then I'll put it in the freezer. But sometimes it traps a little bit of air in it when I put it in the freezer and it still dries my paints out. So uh sometimes i think it's better to just put that in the freezer um now if you don't have the space for it in the freezer just put it in a little plastic cup um take it off with a palette knife and then put the plastic cup in the freezer and it should be fine well thank you for watching hippie artist yep thank you tipu Yep, no problem, Jesse. Like I said, everyone, there's a small chance, a small chance greater than zero, there exists a small chance greater than zero that I will return around the same time tomorrow because I'm really excited to work on this one. If I don't, I will likely be there on Tuesday. If I'm not there on Tuesday, I will likely be there on Wednesday. But know that in the near future, I do want to continue working on this. Um... If you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, you don't have to if you don't want to, but um, if you do subscribe, you can sign up for the notifications. It should notify you uh, as soon as I start to paint live on YouTube. Uh, does the smell get into your food freezer? No, not really. Also, I will admit I have a, a separate freezer. <laughs> I have a separate freezer for, uh, for my uh, palette. I also have uh, the same freezer I actually use for snake food uh, for my ball pythons. So <laughs> I use a different freezer. However, if you want me to test it, if you want me to put the paints in the freezer with my food food, I can do that. But it shouldn't. It shouldn't. Um, the smell from the paints shouldn't get in there because the paints don't really smell. Unless you're talking about like if you put a ton of cadmium, like you take a whole tube of cadmium paint out, it might do something. But if you're worried about the smell, just put it in um, put it in this uh, the Stay Wet palette. This is pretty much the best plastic container that you can get. Um, it, it's made specifically for palettes. It is very airtight, so even the little bit of air that's left, it's in there. Um, so if you're worried about that, these boxes will be the best thing for you. It will even preserve the paints in room temperature as well. Like if I felt like it, I can put this in the stay wet box, leave it out for about like maybe three days or so. And the paints are still like this is still going to be usable in that amount of time. <laughs> you're, you're getting colorful, colorful snakes. That's a good one. That's a good one. Oh, 
All right, so it looks like those are all the last minute questions. Thanks for watching everyone. As usual, in the end of every video, I will play this little um, ad advertisement that I made for the online classes. Yes, the images are old, and yes, I said yesterday that I would up update the images. I will update them soon, especially Angela's work. I definitely have to put um, some of Angela's paintings in here because they're pretty awesome. Uh, so, uh, once again, if you like these videos and you're interested in uh, taking your online art education with me further, like I said in the video, my online classes are uh, videos just like what you're seeing here with the addition of their organized and playlists. Each project has its own playlist. I have a skill level system going from very beginner to uh, more advanced painters depending on what you want to paint and you get to send me images each week for uh, feedback in the virtual classroom video. All of that starts out in the $10 a month um, fee for the online classes. Also if you want to take your education with me even further than that, if you want to paint with me on Zoom camera to camera, I also have the Zoom tiers that are starting at $40 a month. It's pretty much uh, the only one available is $40 a month, and you get to paint with me on Zoom 12 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Tuesday and 5 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Friday. The one-on-one -on -one Zoom tutoring tiers are completely maxed out at the moment, um, but there's other benefits available to you. Uh, in my online classes. Once again, thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you on the next one.